is good and God is good all the time. Hallelujah. We give God the glory. We give God the honor and the praise. Amen. Welcome, welcome this morning. Amen. This is Apostle Rojas coming to you live from the International Christian Center. We are in the house this morning. Hallelujah. We are in the house of the Lord. Glory to God. Hallelujah. You know, for the past four months, four or five months, I've been doing Facebook Live from my home, from my living room. And we have made the transition this morning from the house of the Lord. Amen. And so this morning, I may not be able to see your names and give you a shout out and give you greetings. But hey, come on, I know that you're there and we want to thank God for your support. So hit that share button and come on tune in get your family out get your families out amen get your bibles open i got a word for you today in the name of the lord hallelujah amen in psalms 122 and 1 david said i was glad when they said unto me let us go into the house of the lord hallelujah so we are in the house we are in the house this morning and we thank God for that. You know, David had a passion for the house of the Lord. Oh, yes. And he could not build a house because of all the wars and all the blood that was shed. So his son Solomon had to build that house. Solomon built a house for himself, for the king, and one for the kingdom. Oh, one for the one, one was the house of the Lord, and the other one was for his house amen but david had a passion for god's house i tell you in psalm 23 and 6 he said goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and i shall dwell in the house of the lord forever amen and 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 then um psalms what psalms 84 and 10 he says what i'd rather be a doorkeeper i'd rather be a doorkeeper in the house of the lord than to dwell in the tents of wickedness you know so we thank god for david is psalms 27 and 4 wow he said one thing i desire i desire the house of the lord so we are coming from the house of the lord this morning amen and we thank god now everybody is not out today and i understand there is no pressure on anyone to come out to the, to the church if you don't feel comfortable in that regard why because if you have underlying conditions or if you're a senior we say stay home for now and watch it live on the screen and if you didn't make it out today it doesn't mean that you're not faithful it doesn't mean that you're not loyal one of the things with Apostle Rojas I am balanced and I understand the situation amen so nobody's under pressure you know we are flowing with the spirit of freedom the Word of God says who the Son of Man set free is what free indeed hallelujah glory to God so we thank God for that now today is our first service uh, back in the church since March and we had to get cameras and we had to follow the guidelines of the CDC um, we had to install uh, certain things like sanitizers and we have my mask here we are we are social distancing and we are doing all the right thing yesterday we had a company that came and fumigate and, and 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 sanitize the entire building from the front door to the back door and we will do what's necessary to keep each and everyone safe amen before we go any further this morning i have with me pastor brown pastor brown will come and he will say a prayer for us this morning god bless you sir god bless you man of god as you come and pray for us this morning in jesus name hallelujah god bless you Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Father, in the name of Jesus, oh, Lord, yeah. we thank you this morning. We say oh, to yeah. God be the glory this morning. We thank you, Lord, that we could be back into your house this morning, Father. We know, oh God, that we went through some stuff. But, oh God, it's because of your goodness and your mercy we are here today. And we are here to say thank you, Lord, to God be the glory this morning. Father, we worship you, we praise you, we 
magnify you this morning, Lord, for thou art worthy to be praised and worthy to be held in everlasting counsel. We thank you, Lord, as we come back to your house this morning. Oh God, we pray that in the name of Jesus for a fresh anointing this morning, God. Let your spirit minister to us in a real mighty way this morning so that some heart could be blessed, some heart could be strengthened this morning. Lord, we give you the praise. We give you the honor. We give you the glory. Father, we thank you for ICC members this morning. Oh God, Father, we thank you for the few that are here this morning. We know, oh God, this morning is not by might nor by power, but it's by your spirit, saith the Lord. And Father, we worship you and we praise you this morning, Lord. We give you the glory this morning. We thank you for our leader, Lord, especially this morning. We pray for him this morning. We pray, oh God, that the anointing may break every chain this morning. Father, oh God, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus this morning, Lord, we pray, oh God, that you fill this house this morning, Lord. Father, where we lose joy, you is a God who is able to restore joy this morning. We pray that you may restore unto us the joy of your salvation this morning, Father. Because you say salvation is a free gift this morning. And we thank you, Lord. In spite of what we've been going through, oh God, we come to say thank you this morning, Lord. We come to say glory be to God this morning. We come to say hallelujah. In spite of what we went through, Lord, you've been with us. You've been with us from day one until this moment, Father. And we say thank you this morning. We say hallelujah in the how this morning. Father, we thank you, oh God, for the trials in the tribulation that we've been through. But, oh God, you say when we go through, you're going to be with us this morning. And, Father, we're grateful to you. We show our attitude of gratitude this morning, God. And we say to God, be the glory this morning. We praise your name and we bless your name this morning. Father, and your word that is about to go forth this morning. Oh, yes. We pray that in the name of Jesus, it may strengthen hearts this morning. You, the Bible says your word is quick and is powerful this morning, God. And you say your word will not return void unless it was accomplished. So this morning, Lord, we lift our hearts unto the hills from whence cometh our help this morning, O oh God. I pray, O oh God, even for even all the ICC members this morning, Father. We pray, O oh God, that you may strengthen them this morning. We pray, O oh God, that their hearts may be encouraged this morning, O oh God. Because we recognize, Lord, there was a time David encouraged himself in the Lord. And, and God, you restore this morning. I pray in the name of Jesus for restoration this morning. You is a God who is able to restore this morning. Restore this morning, oh God. We thank you, Lord. We give you honor. We give you praise and we give you glory. In Jesus' name, I pray with thanksgiving. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Praise oh, we God. thank God for that powerful prayer by Pastor Brong. Hallelujah. Amen. We thank God. You know, yesterday I came here and my God, I, I was uh, feeling a little bit, uh, uh, how should I put it? Um, I felt a little bit overwhelmed. And so when I saw Pastor Brong and his wife here and uh, Brother Willie, I was so encouraged as we begin to put things in place. And we did the social distancing and we separated the chairs and um, we got the mics and we got the uh, cameras and the stands. We spent about three, four thousand dollars just on getting cameras. And uh, next week I want to get another camera in Jesus name because we want to spread this gospel throughout the world. We average six, seven hundred people viewing per week and we don't want to lose that. We want to continue spreading this gospel. Amen. And we are doing it from the house of the Lord. Come on, give the Lord a hand clap in the house of God this morning. Hallelujah. Oh, glory be to God. Glory be to God. Amen. Well, today is our first service back and uh, we're going to keep it simple and we're going to keep it short because we are indoor. We will not stay too long. And as time goes on, we will see how things flow and where the Lord lead us. You know, I tell people that I am flexible. 
I am flexible. I, I, I can't put on a prophetic hat and tell you what's going to happen in the fall. We listen to the scientists. We listen to the news. And they talk about a, a, a resurgence in the fall. I don't know. But I'm trusting God every day to lead us and to guide us. And Pastor Ross is flexible. Like the Apostle Paul said, I learned to abound and I learned to abase. I learned to be hungry. I learned to be filled. And if I have to go back home to my house, so be it. But the word will be preached every single week. Amen? Hallelujah. So I am not bound. Nobody's going to put me in a box and cuff me. I am not. I, I go with the flow. One day at a time, sweet Jesus. And where the Lord lead us, we will follow in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Amen. I want to call on uh, Pastor Kojo at this time. Uh, at this time, hallelujah. Glory to God. And um, he will come and minister to us. God bless you this morning, Pastor Kojo. Amen. Hallelujah. Just flow in the anointing. Amen. Praise Jesse, the name of flow. the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Praise the name. It's good to be back. It's good to be back in the church. Glory to God. We bless the name of the Lord this morning. Hallelujah. You can feel free to worship with me this morning.
the mountains before him the demons run in fear at the mention of your name king of majesty there is no power in hell or any who can stand before the power and the presence of the great I am, I am, I am, I am, the great I am, great I am, the great I am. We worship. Have your way, have your way this morning. Thou art the porter, I am the clay. Have your way in the house. Have your way. Thank you, thank you, Pastor Kojo. God bless you. Amen. This morning, you may be seated in the wonderful name of Jesus. Amen. Our first service back, we will not be too long. We don't want to stay indoor too long. We want to follow precautionary measures. We try to follow all the CDC guidelines. And like I tell folks, we are not fearful we are just careful amen hallelujah 
Uh, this morning, I want to get ready for the Word of God. If you are looking via uh, Facebook Live, get your Bibles out this morning. Apostle Rojas, we want to take you on a journey, amen, to the Word of God. And this morning, I would like to bring your attention to Matthew's Gospel, the, 20, uh, the 14th chapter, uh, the 22nd verse. Amen. And this morning, I want to speak on the law of distraction. Now, there is uh, something called the law of attraction, where you attract who you are. Yeah, but this morning, I want to speak on the law of distraction. So many people have lost their focus. They are not uh, 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 focused as they should be. David said, my heart is fixed on thee, O Lord. And so we need to stay focused. Don't let the enemy steal your focus. Don't let the enemy steal your time. Amen. Hallelujah. So it is said that the law of attraction is the ability to attract into our lives whatever we focus on. You get that? That's the law of attraction. All thoughts are turned in, in, in things eventually, into things eventually. If you focus on the negative, guess what? You attract the negative. If you are focused on the positive, you attract the positive. You know, in the book of Galatians, chapter 6, verses uh, 7 and 8, it says, Whatsoever a man sow, that shall he reap. Amen. If you sow to the flesh, you reap what? Corruption. If you sow to the spirit, you reap life everlasting. So the law of attraction, amen, is very, very powerful. You know, someone once said, You are the average of the five people you spend the most time with. The people that you spend time with, you will draw from them. You will take up some traits from them if you spend time with them. If you spend time with broke people, you might just end up being broke. If you spend time with people of faith, you might just end up being faithful. If you spend time with doubters, you might end up walking in, 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 in fear. You know, so there's something called the law of environment. Laws have a way. Amen. The law of gravity, whatever uh, you throw up is going to come right back down. If you jump from a building, whether you're tall, short, fat, rich, poor, it doesn't matter. Laws are laws. Amen. And so there is something called the law of distraction. So what I'm going to do today, I'm going to do a series on the law of attract distraction. And I will deal with one portion from the New Testament. And then I will deal with another portion from the Old Testament. I will deal with Peter in the New Testament. And in the Old Testament, I will deal with Nehemiah. Nehemiah. So bear with me. Amen? All right. Today, I want to read from the NLT. The NLT. That's the New Living Translation. Sometimes I do read from the King James Version. There are so many versions today, and some people have a preference as to what version they would rather uh, read from. Amen. But, um, yeah, verses uh, 22. Are you with me this morning? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can I get some AC up in here? Amen. Glory to God. All right. In, in 22, it, it says, immediately after this, Jesus insisted that his disciples get back into the boat and cross the other side of the lake while he sent the people home. Hallelujah. After sending them home, he went up into a hill, one version say a mountain, by himself to pray. Night fell while he was there alone. Glory to God. Stay with me. After sending them home, he stayed up there. Amen. Verse 24 said, meanwhile, the disciples were in trouble far away from land. I like what the, 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 the King James Version said in verse 24. You know, it says, in the midst of the sea, or in the midst of the lake, rather, in the midst, in the middle. Hallelujah. Meanwhile, the disciples were in trouble far away from land, for a strong wind had risen, and they were fighting heavy waves. My God. 
King James Version says it was a contrary wind. It was blowing against them. Hallelujah. Meanwhile, the disciples read, right, verse 25. About three o'clock, the King James Version will say in the fourth watch of the night. Three o'clock in the morning, Jesus came towards them walking on water. When the disciples saw him walking on the water, they were terrified. My God. They were what? In their fear, they cried out, it's a ghost. They were seeing spirits. But Jesus spoke to them at once. Don't be afraid, he said. Take courage. Take courage. I am here. Then Peter called to him, Lord, if it's really you, tell me to come to you walking on the water. Yes, come, Jesus said. So Peter went over the side of the boat and walked on the water towards him. Hallelujah. Towards Jesus. But when he saw the wind and the waves, he was terrified and began to sink. Save me, Lord, he shouted. Jesus immediately reached out and grabbed him. You have so little faith, Jesus said. Why did you doubt? And when they climbed back in the boat, the wind stopped. Then the disciples worshipped him. You are really the son of God, they exclaimed. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we thank you for your word this morning. Let your word go forth with clarity and simplicity this morning, O God. Those that are watching, those that are here today, O God, we pray that somebody will be influenced, impact, O God, edify, amen, as concerning the word of God. So we thank you, Father, and we give you glory in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Hallelujah. All right, now... We talk about distraction. And um, do you know that it is said that one in four car accidents in the U.S., amen, as a result of texting? Because why? When you are driving and you are texting, you are distracted. You know what it said? It said six times more likely to have an accident than driving drunk while texting. Every year in the U.S., there are 6,000 deaths just as a result of texting and driving. There are over half a million injuries. There are 1.6 million car accidents because people are on their phone and they are distracted. And I thank God for the phone. The phone is a blessing. I do all my business practically on my phone. If I'm leaving the house and I forget my phone, I'm making a beeline and I'm going back to get my phone. I think this generation is addicted to the phone and so am I. Can I make an open confession? I do trade. I do stocks. I, I, I pay my bills. Hallelujah. On my phone. I get videos. I send chat. I send. Listen, man, this is the order of the day. But we have to be careful as much as the phone is good, if it is distracting you, then it can be a problem. Especially when you're driving. So I want to talk this morning about the laws of distraction. Peter was distracted. And that was not good. Let me get into this scripture. It says in 22, straight, uh, meanwhile, the disciples were in trouble, right? Because why? Um... Immediately, Jesus insists that the disciples do what? They, 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 they go uh, uh, on the other side while he sends the multitude away. Now, now watch this. You've got to understand something. If you read the entire chapter, you will see that Jesus had healed or fed, rather, 5,000 men beside women and children. He fed the multitude. They were following him for a few days. They were hungry. And guess what? 
he told his disciples let's get bread that they may eat the disciples said lord all we have here is a little lad a little fellow with a, a, a five barley loaves and two small fishes but what are they among so many jesus said make them sit down and he fed five thousand men beside women and children they did not count the women and children but you know women always outnumber men in ministry and in church so it's quite possible if you multiply that by four you could have twenty thousand people you multiply that by eight and by the way long ago families was much larger so you talking about about twenty thousand minimum people that jesus fed he was doing ministry let me say this to us ministry is not easy i thank god for the ministry i have been doing ministry for 40 years i love ministry that's my passion that's where my heart is amen and i tell you what but even in ministry ministry can take a lot out of you and people have to understand that it's not just the pastor ministering to you people have to understand how to uphold the man of god how to uphold the woman of god how to pray for your shepherd amen because in as much as we give out we need to receive look pastor brown i just went on a trip to niagara with my wife and i we drove four hours uh, i mean uh, seven hours over 400 miles but guess what i had to stop on the way to refill because if i did not refill my car i would be in problems i would run out of gas and in life ministry sometimes you got to take a break to get refilled to get refreshed to be renewed jesus just fed a multitude and now he was exhausted ministry takes a lot out of you people don't realize that's why i pray for men of god and i give people respect when come to ministry it's not easy do you know it says right now in this pandemic pastors are quitting they were quitting before the pandemic but now they are quitting more than before there's a statistic that came out that after the pandemic it seemed like some 20 percent of pastors say i'm done with church money is not coming in they are depressed the church is is closed and my god it's like what's going on here you know so 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 ministry takes a lot that's why i appreciate amen you you can't do it alone yesterday i came here when i saw pastor brown and i saw uh, his wife and brother Willie, i was encouraged listen iron sharpened iron so does a man sharpen the countenance of his friend we cannot do this alone jesus needed 12 disciples to work with him hallelujah glory to god so we thank god for the support of the church the church you came out this morning and i thank god i feel good when i see you amen hallelujah we need to encourage one another when when the woman with the issue of blood touched his garment you know what jesus said he said i felt virtue left my body it, ministry ministry takes a lot people think preaching is easy or ministering it's easy so, you know i get up this morning four o'clock this morning on my face before god had my cup of coffee the birds were tweeting outside and my god that's when i begin to download i begin to hear from god and god begins to deposit in my spirit hallelujah amen so i was up four o'clock this morning yesterday morning we spent all day at the church had to run out do a baby dedication run back in this is ministry ministry is hard work but i'm not complaining i've been doing this since i was a teenager and i love doing it yeah there will be challenges but sometimes pastors need to take a break do you know when i started preaching at the age of 19 i never for a few years i never took a sunday off i'm telling the truth 52 Sundays a year, if I took a Sunday off, I would feel guilty. And so what happened? Pastors wear themselves out. They burn themselves out. They are human. And then the other thing, some folks expect them to be superhuman. And then some pull this way and some pull this way. Some say open, some say close. Some say stay open, some say stay close. And you now, you have to be, you have to really hear from God because you can't please everybody. And sometimes you are criticized, sometimes you are accused on fear. All these things happen in ministry and you still got to come out here Sunday after Sunday with a smile on your face, with a joy in your heart and preach the word. And it's not easy, Pastor Kojo, because I get up 4 o'clock this morning and I was seeking, because you know why? You know why? If I come and I preach the same thing to you, you say, Pastor, is stale. He is studying. 
And if you think this is easy, ask somebody to come up here and take this microphone. You might be able to preach once a month and have a good, good bullet in your gun, but to preach every Sunday and have a word fresh. It takes time before God. Are you with me? I'm getting to the message. So Jesus, what after he... After he did this walk with the multitude, he sent them away. He sent them home, the Bible said. And his disciples, he said, go on the other side while he went up in the mountain to pray. He went to get a download. He went to be refreshed and renewed and revived and restored. Because when you minister, it drains you. The power of God, the anointing flowing through you, saturating your body. It takes something. Sometimes you're wet. Sometimes you sweat. You've got to change your clothes. You're, you're dripping with, with sweat. It is work. Hallelujah. That's why, man, don't, 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 don't give your pastor a heart. Support the man of God. Work with your pastor. It's, it's beautiful when we walk, we could work with one another. Some people just out to give you a hard time. I mean, the work is already hard and they compound on top of that. They pull back, they hold back the money, they hold back the thing. They're not supportive. Hallelujah. But this is God's work. So what happened? He sent the people home. And, and let me tell you something. Sometimes you need some quiet time. I love friendship, I love fellowship, I love relationship. But listen, sometimes the noises and the voices, you've got to, you've got to, you've got to, listen man, you've got to get some time with God. Because you, you can solve every problem. Hallelujah. You, 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 you just can't man. And sometimes, listen. If I drop down today and I went home to be with the Lord, this church will continue one way or the other. And so sometimes we feel that we, we can't take a little time off. I am big on vacation. Hello. I'm ready for a cruise, but not right now. Hey, hey, if they give me a free ticket to Disney World, I ain't going. I'm staying right up in here. You think I'm stupid? I was so smart. I didn't leave New York. I went to New York, Niagara, and I stayed on the American side. Hello. But ever so often, man, you need to get away, man, and take, smell the fresh air. And you don't have to feel guilty about it. Jesus sent the multitude home. He sent the disciples to go on the other side while he took some personal dung time, went up in the mountain to be refilled, to be refreshed, to be renewed, and spend some time with God. No, no, no. A few weeks ago, I talked to you about how the, Jesus went through Jerusalem, to, went to Jerusalem and he passed through Samaria and Galilee. Now, not only will you pass through in life, but sometimes you have to pass over. Sometimes you got to cross over from one year, from 2019 to 2020. Sometimes you got to cross the Atlantic, amen, to get on the other side, amen, of Europe, amen. And sometimes in crossing over, do you know how many planes plummeted and sank in the Atlantic before they were successfully able to cross the Atlantic crossing over sometimes is not easy crossing even a busy highway is not easy these cars are coming at 60 70 miles an hour it's not always easy to cross over are you with me sometimes it's not easy going through it's not easy crossing over making that transition going from one place to the next and they were going amen on the other side and after sending them home, he went up into the, the hills by himself. Amen. Thank God for the hills. Thank God for the mountain. There's something about the mountain. You know, a lot of stuff took place in the early days on mountain. Mount Moriah. Mount Sinai. Mount Zion. Mount Horeb. Mount Ararat. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Mount Olive. Mount Calvary. There is something about the mount. God met Moses on the mountain and gave him the Ten Commandments. Sometimes you've got to go up. And when you go up, the further you go up, the further you can see. And sometimes God is calling you to a higher place. David said, I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills from whence cometh my help. My help comes from the Lord who made the heaven and the earth. He went up in the hill. The higher you go, the further you can see. Glory to God. Hallelujah. By himself to do what? To pray and night fell while he was there alone glory to God 
Glory to God. He had an all night prayer meeting. Glory Jesus. Praying all night. Hallelujah. Meanwhile, the disciples were in trouble. What happened to the disciples? They were in trouble. They were in trouble. Why? Why were they in trouble? Because what? They were in the midst. Can you give me that scripture in the, in the, in the King James Vision Version? It says, uh, uh, in the midst. A storm arose in the midst. While they were in the middle of the sea or the middle of the lake, they said a storm arose. A storm arose. And let me tell you something, in the middle of your finance, the enemy will attack you. In the middle of your marriage, in the middle of your ministry, in the middle of your career, in the middle of your health, watch out for the enemy. The Bible said the thief come not but to kill, steal, and to destroy. He is an accuser of the brethren. He will try to distract you at every moment. In the middle. They were neither here nor there. They were in the midst. They, they were thinking, should we go forward? Should we go backward? In the middle of the lake, in the middle of the sea, a storm arose. You know, a few days ago, just last week, we had a storm here. Man, wind. You don't play with wind. The Bible said the wind was contrary. The wind can topple a house. It can topple a tree. It can, people can lose. I had members of the church. They lost power. Because why? Amen. Because of the wind. A wind can be a deadly thing. Amen. A storm, a category five hurricane. My God, it will knock you off your feet. Uh, there arose a storm in the middle of the sea. Hallelujah. Strong winds. They have to fight the waves. Hallelujah. They were on their own. And about the Bible says in the fourth watch of the night, which was three o'clock in the morning, Jesus came to watch them walking on the water. Hallelujah. How did Jesus came? He came walking on the water. Do you know the God that we serve is able to do exceeding abundantly above all we can think or ask? With God, all things are possible. Nothing is too hard. Nothing is too difficult for God to do. Amen. If you are in trouble, call on Jesus. David said, I cried to the Lord with my voice and he heard me. Amen. My God, in the middle of the storm, in the middle of the night, my God, in the dark, amen, while the waves were coming against them, my God, Jesus did what? He came walking on the water. I heard someone says he may not come when you want him, but guess what? He is always on time. Hallelujah. If you are going through a storm, amen, there are all kinds of storm. There are sandstorm, there are hailstorm, there are windstorm. Recently we had desert storm, amen. A storm ain't no joke, but once Jesus is in the vessel, we can smile at that storm. Hallelujah, amen. It is nice to know when you're in trouble, you can call on a friend. You can call on a brother. You can call on Jesus, amen. Three o'clock in the morning, he came walking on the water. Hallelujah. And guess what they did? When the disciples saw him walking on the water, amen. Jesus is a miracle working God walking on the water. He was dominating the element, he was defying the laws of nature. This was not a parable. This was a real story. He walked on the water. And when they saw him, when they saw him, they were terrified. In their fear, they cried out, it's a ghost. Hallelujah. Glory to God. They cried out for fear. Brothers and sisters, I want to say to you today, God did not give us the spirit of fear, but of power, of love, and of a strong mind. Hallelujah. We thank God for faith. They say it's a ghost. They cried out for fear. They panic. You know what the scripture said in Job 3 and 25? Job said, the very same thing that I feared came upon me 
if you if you're walking in fear you attract fear hallelujah but what did jesus said he spoke to them at once don't be afraid don't be afraid why take courage i am here don't be afraid why i am here i, I want to say to us in this in this pandemic don't be afraid don't be afraid god is able hallelujah god is able then peter challenged god he challenged jesus he said lord if it is you if it is really really you then tell me to come to you walking on the water lord if it is you Peter being the chief spokesman, Peter being the leader of the pack, he says, Lord, if it is you, and you tell me to come, somebody once said, come is one of the sweetest words in the English language. When someone tells you, come up higher. The spirit and the bride say, come. Come unto me, all you that labor. Amen. If you're standing out there, amen, and they want someone to give a job, or someone want the interview, and they say, you come. It's nice when they say, come up higher. Come, sit up here with me. Come, join my banquet. Hallelujah. Come. Jesus, in the midst of the storm, in the midst of the disaster, he told Peter to come. Come as you are. Amen. Come on the water. Amen. I will take you on this journey with God, with God, with God. All things are possible. Not by myself. I can't do it by myself. I don't have the strength and the power of my own. But with God, all things are possible. Peter, come. And guess what? When he told him, come, Peter went over the side of the boat, and guess what? He walked on the water. He walked on the water. Peter now was walking on water. Peter was experiencing the miraculous and the supernatural. Peter was experiencing a miracle. Peter was experiencing the move of God. Peter was experiencing, hallelujah, amen, breakthrough and deliverance. Peter was in a zone. Peter, momentum was in his favor. Peter was on a roll. He was dominating the element. He was walking on water. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You know, it's funny in life how at one moment we can be on such a high. and one moment we experience in success and within, within a, the, in the, the, the drop of a dime we experience in failure. Isn't life can throw you curve all the times? You thought everything was doing well. It seemed like, amen, you could run through a troop and leap over a wall. And all of a sudden, my God, in, the, in, the, in your blessing, all of a sudden, in, in, in your time of rejoicing, bad news came. All of a sudden, something happened. Things turned. Hallelujah. Peter seemed to be on cloud nine. He was rolling, amen, the waves. He was riding the waves, so to speak. And he was walking, hallelujah. Faith attract faith. Faith draws faith. Jesus walking, Peter walking towards each other on the water, in the storm. Hallelujah. Amen. When you walk with God, you can walk in authority. When you walk in God, you can walk in dominion. When you walk in God, you can walk in power. When you walk in God, you can walk in victory. When you walk with God, you can walk with breakthrough. But something happened. That's what I want to talk to you about this week and next week. Law of destruction. He was doing well. And all of a sudden, he took his eyes off Jesus and he placed it on the circumstances. And that's the mistake. I want to encourage us this morning. Don't let the devil steal your focus and steal your time. Hallelujah. I am telling you, you will be distracted. Folks, listen, the enemy is so cunning and crafty. He will not tell you go rob a bank or do something like that. You know, you know, that's obvious. But what he will do, he will bring distraction. 
have you ever set yourself to do something and the phone rang and you say i was going to do this but i got distracted oh that's a trick of the enemy to distract you from your purpose from your joy and from your destiny is there anybody being distracted today amen stay focused what you focus on expands what you focus on you attract hallelujah amen so you need to focus on what you want i'll give you two scripture psalms chapter one blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the godly nor sitteth at the seat of the scornful but his delight is what in the law of the lord and in the law do he meditate 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 day and night what you meditate on amen will manifest you see before prosperity comes you gotta meditate as a man think at Proverbs 23 and 7 so is he so you gotta stay focused the word focus follow one's course until success you gotta stay focused until you get your breakthrough don't be distracted sometimes friends can distract you sometimes co-workers can distract you sometimes different people can distract you but i'm saying you gotta meditate you gotta think you know somebody once said only five percent of people think 10 percent think they think and 50 85 percent rather die than think you know you gotta think you know what some folks do they make a decision and then think they say the word and then they think about what they said after you don't speak it already you gotta think before you speak folks buy the car and after they buy the car they're doing the research you should do the research before you buy the car people don't think this is a powerful way if you would think people don't think him that's why i have to stay focused because when all these people coming at you with different advice and different counsel and different things you gotta be careful i listen to mature people i listen to the professionals and then i make a decision I look at my options i look at the facts i look at the truth you cannot be easily influenced you go to buy a car and the salesman say if you don't buy it today we're taking it off the table well take it off the table they put pressure on you psychologically they put pressure on you listen i was talking to a friend the other day about certain things with insurance because i'm into finance and he said rojas is this a good decision i said no he said, Rojas, stay right there. I'm calling up the guy right now. He called and said, I, I'm canceling. And the guy said, you can't do that. I spent so much time arranging this thing for you. He said, but I don't want it anymore. He said, but how you make me put in all this work and you don't want to take it now? I said, listen, don't fall under the pressure. You got to learn how to fall. You got to know when to fall and when to hold. You got to know when to say yes and you got to know when to say no. And sometimes we say it under pressure. How many times you make a decision and afterwards you regret I don't let nobody pressure me. Hallelujah. I'm not arrogant. I'm humble. I'm nice. But you know, why? Why? And then some people opinion, they feel the opinion is Bible. Do you know some folks, if they give you an opinion, you don't take it, they're upset with you? That's not fair. I have a right to make a decision. I have the, 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 the power of a choice. Hallelujah. So, so you, you think, you meditate. That's powerful. You meditate, and after meditation come what? Prosperity. It's the same thing in the book of Joshua. Joshua chapter 1 and verses 8. He said, this book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth. If you meditate on it day and night, you will make your way prosperous, and you will have good success. So you got to think, people. Sometimes people are easily influenced. And sometimes they get influenced in the wrong things make up your mind for yourself yeah. hallelujah so faith was attracting faith who did king solomon attract queen of sheba it's not ironic it's not funny that bill gates and warren buffett they are friends they are both billionaires nobody jealous in nobody who you are tracking in your life are you being distracted? Sometimes the relationship is, not, is, is, is toxic. It's not even good for you. And you don't have the strength to walk away. Faith, call it faith. Deep, call it deep. Peter, Jesus had come and the boat were walking on the water. Boom, distraction come. The wind began to blow. 
and he took his eyes of Jesus and he began to sink. Hallelujah. My God. Amen. One minute he was doing so good. And the next minute, all of a sudden, a cloud of depression, a cloud. Of, so how did Peter flow in a crisis? Hallelujah. You know, I feel like to continue this message on next week. We in church today, we're not going to be long, but we thank God for being in the house of the Lord. The house of the Lord is a powerful place. We need God's house. We pray that this too shall pass and the, the houses of, of, of the Lord will be opened up and people can come. You know, I was talking to one of the brothers from the church. He said, Pastor, you know what? I miss the church. And there are some people that live alone and this church is their family. He said, I pass by here every day. It means a lot to him. The house of the Lord. David said, I'd rather be a doorkeeper in the house of the Lord. He said, I will, I will dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. There's something about the courts of God. And this is our move. The gospel must go forth with power and authority. But today, I speak today that you will be focused. You will be determined. Hallelujah. Your heart will be fixed on him. And you will not let anything distract you. Amen. From what God has called you to do. Can I continue this message on next week? And can I pray for you? I want to pray for you in the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. There's somebody that is discouraged. They're saying some pastors are not even open up the churches again. Some are opening up in 2021. Some are waiting on a vaccine. It's hard to social distance when you have 5,000 members. You know, so they are streaming online. And then there are some small churches. They don't know how to stream online. We struggled ourselves when we came back. Amen. For me, the first time I did a Facebook Live was when the pandemic hit in May. Didn't know how to mute my phone in the middle of my preaching phone ringing. Try out some things, went private. Next thing I went on Facebook private and I said, come on in, come on in, come on in. And nobody ain't coming in. One morning I went and I was upside down. I said, Kathy, what to do? I'm upside down. But we're getting it eventually. Now we got a camera. A $2,000 equipment. Amen. We, we're looking good with HD in the name of the Lord. And we're going to do this. We're going to get another camera and another camera. And we're going to invest in the kingdom. And we're going to meet people. And we're going to preach to you in South Africa. And in UK. And in Trinidad. And in Florida. In the name of the Lord. Jesus said before I come, this gospel must be preached in all the world. And then shall the end come. I tell Jared, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. Just give me the camera. Amen. And give me a Bible. And I'm going to preach the word of God. Hallelujah. So we are back in Jesus' name. And we're going to ride this wave like Peter until the Lord lead us in a different direction. But I want to say be encouraged and stay focused. Don't get distracted. Next week I want to con conclude this message about, about, about Peter and then I'm going to move into Nehemiah where he was doing a good work. Now Peter, Peter got distracted in a crisis. Nehemiah, amen, the spirit of the law of destruction came when he was building, when he was progressive. And you got to be careful when you start to move into a different level. People will try to distract you in a subtle way. And you have to have the spirit of discernment and the spirit of wisdom to understand. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Amen. So this morning we want to challenge you this morning as we close to receive our tithes and offering. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Tithes and offering. And we want to encourage those that are looking, amen, to give online. International Christian Center. Our website is there. Amen. Through Giveify. And we're going to put this up on the screen next week. We're getting there. God is good. Amen. We will be meeting and reaching thousands of people. Amen. We're going to do this. I'm telling folks, if you don't have an online present in this day and age, you are out of the loop. We thank God. This is where the world is going. This is where tech is going. And we thank God that we can use this platform to preach the gospel and minister to you. So do the best you can. Those that are looking first time, give us amen. If you are not here in the church this morning, you can send your tithes online. You can send your check in the mail, 1673 Dean Street, Brooklyn, New York. 
amen zip code one one two one three make it out to icc international christian center we say god bless you we say god keep you let me say a prayer for you and i will shout you out those that are there put a put a put a message on there amen let me know that you're there and i will reply after the service but i can give you a shout out now because i can't see you amen but we we know you're there and we thank god for your support and we thank god for your contribution of love amen god is good and god is good all the time i feel we 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 we, we made we made, we made the start we made the start we made the break and now we're going to flow in jesus name we're going to fine tune things we're going to get this thing right we're going to get this thing better in jesus name let me pray father in the name of jesus everyone that is looking oh god today somebody is hurting somebody is trying to get from point a to point b they're trying to get over on the other side and it seemed like they meet a resistance it seemed like the wind is blowing back against them it seemed like there's a contrary spirit oh god and in the middle of their transition in the middle of their journey in the middle of their walk the wind is blowing back at them the tidal waves of grief winds of disappointment uh, oh my god the floods uh, are pounding uh, winds of grief floods of disappointment uh, oh god but i pray that lord you will come to their rescue hallelujah in the name of jesus be courageous uh, take courage hallelujah god will rescue you Peter was going down and while he was going down God stretched forth his hands and God saved him this morning I pray for salvation in the name of Jesus if you are looking this morning in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth the son of the living God I pray that God will touch you touch your finance in the middle of your finance in the middle of your career in the middle of your health in the middle of your ministry now you're discouraged before the pandemic he was doing good but now the church is closed the offering is not coming the tithes is not coming you feel discouraged there's a man of god out there he wants to close his church but i speak right now courage in the name of jesus amen god is able to make a way in the wilderness and rivers in a desert place i speak to that brother i speak to that sister father that they will get back online they will get back in line stay focused hallelujah their heart will be sucked towards god they will set their face as a flint and they will be focused and lord we come against the spirit of distraction we come against the spirit of intimidation we come against the spirit of fear and oh god i pray in the name of jesus that lord you will stretch forth your hands right now pull that man up pull that woman somebody said i was sinking deep in sin far from the peaceful shore but the master heard my cry hallelujah and he rescued me he rescued the perishing he's care for the dying hallelujah in the midst of prayer in the midst of jesus time in the mountain he came in the middle of the night and rescued his disciples let me say today jesus cares hallelujah and he's here to rescue he's here to preserve life he's here to save and he's here to deliver listen god bless you be encouraged and we will see you on next week this is apostle roja saying god bless you amen we will continue this powerful message about distraction amen and after this you will be so focused you will set your goals amen you will set your 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 your, your, your determination to what you desire and you will go get it you know they are saying that desire is the starting point of all achievement amen don't get sidetracked don't be distracted stay the course and when you stay the course if peter had stayed the course if he had keep his eyes on the price if he had keep his eyes on jesus he would have walked all the way to the master but because of the circumstances because of the surrounding he got distracted and he began to go down amen if you are distracted you will go down amen if you are texting and driving it's dangerous you could run into an 18 wheeler you gotta stay focused keep your eyes on the price keep your eyes on the road stay focused uh, and don't be distracted in jesus name listen god bless you and we'll see you next week same place same time at the international christian center god bless you have a good one Bye.